Allison Francis here with another episode of It's 501 Somewhere. Uh, with me, I have the lovely Chris Blackman, who really needs no introduction. Um, Chris is now the channel chief officer over at JS Group, and I wanted to have her on today to talk a little bit about the MSP 501 and kind of past and present. So welcome, Chris. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's so great to be back yeah, as a guest yeah. for this time. <laughs> yes. What are you drinking, Chris? Um, the cheapest Alamos Malbec that I can find in the store. <laughs> I'm drinking Malbec too and out of a mug, so. <laughs> so <laughs> you're even classier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Not mad at it. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for being here. And like I said, I, I kind of wanted to talk about, so, you know, we're in the throes of the, the 2021 MSP 501 applications. Um, and so I kind of wanted to bring you on just to talk a little bit about, I mean, you headed up that program for, for how many years was it? Four? Four, about four. Yeah, so you really, you came in to it at an interesting time. You kind of took it, you made it what it is today. And so I kind of wanted to just talk through a little bit about like, what did it look like when you were first, when you first started it and, you know, kind of what you turned it into over the course of those four years? Well, uh, let's see, the 501 was first launched by Joe Patneri, who's now over at Channel E to E, and this was, gosh, probably almost 15 years ago. Right. Back then it was the MSP 100, I think. Yeah. And then it became the 250, um, and before it finally became the MSP 501. Um, so when I came on to what was then Penton, I came on as the VAR guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and my colleague, um, Aldrin Brown was editor in chief of MSP mentor, which is where the MSP 501 resides. And so that first year, uh, Aldrin, along with my then boss, TC Doyle, um, really ran that program. And, you know, this was, it was a, a ranking list, you know, and it served its purposes and it did evolve along with the industry. So, um, gosh, I guess it was five or six years ago, um, Jim Lippy, who is now at Kaseya, and TC actually tweaked the methodology to weight different revenue streams differently. So pure play resale came in at a lower weight than managed services or cloud or, you know, whatever. Um, so that change had been made. And then when I took, after Informa bought Penton and we combined all four of those sites into Channel Futures, is when I took over the MSP 501. Um, I kind of needed a win just in life at that time. So TC and Lorna Gary, who oversaw all content on those sites, um, handed me the MSP 501 and said, see what you can do with this. And so we decided to make it into a big community. It was great. I really fell in love with the MSP 501. To this day, I'm, it's, probably the thing that I'm proudest of in my career. And I made so many close friends, so many MSP friends through it. Um, so we built up a community. We built up a robust market research and um, analytics offering around it. We built up an online um, on-demand education webinar and program around it, all kinds of cool things. Um, and we, we launched the MSP 501 Gala at the fall event, um, which is always a super fun time every year. So we really made hay of it and it turned into um, a, a primary revenue driver for Channel Futures and one of the pillars of the brand. Absolutely. And then last year, we redid the methodology, which you guys have fine tuned again for this year. We have, and you were really instrumental in you know, making sure that that was something that we did to really reflect, you know, the way the industry is moving, um, which is so important to do. And, you know, I don't think that's something that you'd, you'd think about applying to an award program. You know, it's, it's, you know, we had to tweak what revenue meant. We had to tweak what, you know, kind of how that all fit in with everything um, and really kind of reflect, you know, a mature channel. And not, and again, the other aspect of it was just not saying, well, here are the biggest MSPs. I think that's, you know, the kind of the biggest thing that I remember you kind of hammering home was this isn't just a list about the biggest MSPs. These are, you know, this is about 
pure play MSPs. These are people who are killing it in the channel, you know, based on their robust MSP practices. So that was something that I know that you were really like just nose like down, just trying to figure out what do we do? How do we tweak this? Do you want to do you want to walk us through that a little bit? Well, so some interesting things happened with a 2019 list that really prompted all of these um, these conversations. Something like a fifth of the list um, fell below 20%, or maybe maybe less than that, but it fell below 20% of their annual revenue as recurring. Hard to be an MSP with that little amount of recurring revenue. Right. <laughs> um, we had the top 10 um, MSP 501 winners in 2019, only I think three of them self-identified as an MSP. There were resellers, there were telco agents, there were, but only three of them self-identified as an MSP. For a list that's supposed to recognize the top MSPs in the world, that's a problem. Um, and then we saw these huge discrepancies opening up between the top people on the list and those that made up probably, I don't know, the bottom 400, um, just this huge revenue discrepancy. And it made us start questioning, what is it that now that all of this money is coming into the channel, there's all this consolidation happening. Um, the channel is getting even more attention than it ever has before from investors, private equity. What is it that actually makes a good investment? What makes it a good MSP? And in the past, it, the rankings had only, been, um, had only been focused on annual revenue. And so that gives you a great idea of who the biggest are, but not necessarily the most innovative, the most efficient, the most pure play. Absolutely. So that was when I brought you in and you and I together had like three months of discovery calls with dozens and dozens of people Yep. asking about what metrics should we measure and so we just went from there yeah and it really helped us get a temperature on things in general i mean not just fitting into that you know <laughs> what do we do it was it was more it was also just like okay well this is how you guys are actually thinking and operating and you know creating your books and forecasting and all of that so that was i just remember that being also just doubly helpful and you know even throughout the the 2020 msp 501 process um, it was, it was interesting to kind of get that feedback. So, you know, that's something that, you know, we continued on with this year and it, it may pivot again. It may evolve again. Um, you know, again, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. As it should. Um, that's just, and that's something you have to do. You have to, you have to go with, again, I keep saying this, but like where the industry is going. So, um, always just, it's interesting to hear people's perspectives. And I mean, it was a shift, right? You know, it was, it was a big shift. But like, that's how you learn. And you know, the, the, the list is more powerful than ever because of that. And I really think that. You know, we, there were some people that were not happy. No. People <laughs> that typically ranked in the top 50. Right. That because of the new methodology, we were focusing on how much of your annual revenue is recurring. What's your revenue per employee? Um, what's your profit margin? You know, it doesn't make any sense to just measure revenue. If you're breaking in all the revenue in the world, but bleeding it out through inefficient processes, then you can't be qualified as a best in class MSP. Absolutely. And so we had some people that weren't happy. Um, and we had some people that shifted over to the next gen list. Mm -hmm that was four people that, four shops that, whose uh, annual revenues fell below that 20% threshold. Right. Um, annual recurring revenues fell yep. below the 30% threshold. <laughs> it's <a> mouthful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we've shifted some people over to that list and there was a lot of shuffling. Like um, one of my now dear friends, Nancy Sabino, who runs Sabino Comp Tech out of Katy, Texas. She came in at number 501 in 2018. Mm -hmm. She didn't make the list in 2019. But in 2020, I forget the exact ranking, but it's somewhere in like the 40s or 50s mm -hmm. that she landed. And because she runs such a tight shop, it's small, but it's making all the right choices. It's a tight shop that's really buttoned up and focused on the things that she needs to be focused on. So yeah, there was a lot of shifting, but for the most part, overwhelmingly for the most part, not for everybody, but for most of them, it was a positive change. Even people who fell in the rankings 
Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. It was a good change. Yeah, and again, you're not you're you're not going to make everyone happy. It's it is just again the kind of the nature of things. But um, overall, I think you know we stand by kind of what we did, and um, again, at the heart of it, it's all about just evolving the list to be the best it can be. Really, I mean, it's <laughs> really it is. So. <laughs> So, and, and again, you, you played such a huge part in that. And I think, you know, it can only, it only has such a good platform to, to stand on from here on out. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, kind of how it evolves in the, in the coming years. So such a great team at channel partners from, you know, Brittany Watts and Jesse Truscio over in marketing all the way to Jessica Ackerman, Kelly Danziger on the events side, you've got Craig and his whole editorial team helping support it through stories. I mean, it really, I was the one whose face was out there, but it was everybody. And I, I want to make that very clear. It was um, a huge, huge effort. It's by, an army. It really does. And uh, I'm, I'm feeling that too. Like I could not, I could not run this program without those people. You know, it is, it is, it would be, it would be impossible. Yep. Um, you know, just, just the insights and the expertise they lend. And yeah, I could not say enough good things. So that's definitely, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's definitely true. They keep all the trains running on time. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't want to forget to mention Jeanette Andre too. Oh, Jeanette. Oh my God. Yes. Fabulous, fabulous job with the MSP 501 every year. 100%. Um, Talk about owning a program and owning a function. She came in just a couple of years ago and knocked it out of the park with getting our MSP 501ers to the, the gala in the fall and really helping to build that community. She's fantastic. Yes. Well, Chris, is there anything else you want to touch on? I, I, I mean, again, this, this program is just so amazing. And you really, and not to say this too many times, but you really did make it what it is today. And, you know, we owe so much to you for that. Um, anything else you want to say about, you know, what it maybe would look like going forward? Well, I want to ask you that. So how's it going running it by yourself for the first year? I mean, you were at my side every single step of the way in 2020, but now it's all your show. Well, and it, I don't want to oversimplify it and say that I just going back to like the incredible team, especially, you know, I, I meet weekly with, uh, Jesse and Jeanette, um, and I could not do it without them. Just the ideas that they come up with on, okay, well, let's, let's maybe do this. Let's, let's hit this group. Let's, um, you know, offer an incentive. Let's like do all this stuff. You know, it's, I could not do it without their just amazing ideas. And um, we're tracking well um, in terms of applications at this point, uh, especially compared, especially compared to last year. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I mean, strange year in general, but so I don't even know if that counts, but you know, with, with, uh, 2019 and 2018 also numbers we're doing well um, people are getting them in um, having good dialogues with people um, you know way less questions than last year which is really good I think we took you know some of the, the sticking points people had uh, last year and kind of made sure we put those at the front of the application or we we put a lot of like um, uh, uh, pieces about out about it or you know just kind of highlighted those things so um, hopefully made it easier on people. I look, I know it's a long application, but we really, we, I want to say we appreciate people kind of sticking through it through all of that. And, you know, once again, say, you know, just for the sake of this, like we're always here to help, um, email us with your questions, but yeah, anyway, it's, it's just been, it's been a really good year and, you know, I don't want to jinx it at this point, but we're tracking really well. So right. that's, that speaks to so many different parts. Have you fallen in love with the 501ers the way oh. that I did? Oh yeah. Like we've That's gotten, I mean, there's the, there's the questions we get and that, but then there's people who are like, you know, just, just really grateful for the opportunity. Um, and just like kind of the, some of the conversations and I've gotten to know several, you know, MSPs that maybe I hadn't known before. And you know, those, 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 um, conversations kind of lead to, well, do you want to do a webinar? Do you want to do a podcast? Like, do you want to meet for drinks? Not that that's a thing, but like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's making those relationships and you know, that kind of started to happen while you were still here. But, um, I just, there's, there's several people now that I'm just like, man, I really hope you come to our event in November. Cause I would like to hug you. <laughs> you I'll know? be there. Yay. <laughs> come hell or high water. Yes. Seriously though. <laughs> seriously though. Well, you're doing a really great job with it, and I would be remiss if I didn't give a thank you and a nod of acknowledgement to Scott Grau, too. 
who is the data king. I call him my data amigo. <laughs> <laughs> really has just run that program for so many years and i am so glad that i left it in such capable hands and i'm so excited to see what you're going to do with it in 2021 i know it's going to be great i have the utmost faith in you and the whole team and uh yeah i'm just excited to see what's going to happen well thank you and you know that, that means a lot coming from you and i'm excited too um It'll be, you know, once the application is closed and we start mining all that data, it'll be really interesting to see. I mean, it's not just, you know, the MSP 501 is, is part of it. You know, we take that data and we turn it into this wonderful report, which tells us so much about what MSPs are doing, paying attention to, how, again, how they're forming. It forms the whole content strategy. Yes. So that's, that's going to be the second element of this that's going to be really exciting. But yeah, we are so excited to, to see who gets on this this year and recognize all of you guys in November. So yeah, great stuff. Can't wait to see the list when it comes out, yeah. see all my friends' names on there. Yes, absolutely. Well, all right, Allison, well, if I don't see you before then, which I'm hoping that I can make happen, you're out there in beautiful, sunny, yet... Uh, still cool Colorado and I'm stuck in sweltering Louisiana so I'm hopeful that I'm going to get to come see you at some point but if I don't see you before then then I will definitely see you in November we can raise a glass together definitely and just all the hugs <laughs> all the hugs <laughs> well thank you again for for being on this for chatting with me guys this has been another episode of it's 501 somewhere cheers cheers Clink. <laughs> <laughs>